first will be Matt Jones. Hi. I'll let them all do their own introductions. Uh, second slot will be David Itchfield and Fidel, who are doing slightly easier to work, but they're trying to uh, work together to do a kind of coherent presentation. Uh, finally, Jonathan Mosley will be talking about his practice with Sophie Warren. Uh, hopefully, we finish at we will we'll finish at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'll have uh, probably a general discussion there. Okay, I'll hand over to Matt. Okay, thanks, Lee. Um, I'm going to use, talk about my research, my PhD by design, uh, Place and Market Talent, uh, which is a personal reflective uh, piece of design research. Uh, I suppose my background, first of all, um, I worked for six years at Design Searching in Wales, uh, based in the Logical Architecture at Cardiff University, which is a design practice, uh, doing life projects, commissions, teaching and research. And this is really where I started thinking about design research and where my approach comes from. Uh, and we did a lot of projects mostly around Wales where there were common themes of design in sensitive contexts and sensitive places, tectonics and materials uh, and innovative construction, composition and form and ideas of economy. While I was working there, I started initially doing an amphibian and then converted to a PhD uh, looking at historic towns. Okay. Particularly towns that have a strong sense of history, uh, market towns, for example, uh, but that are quite often have a lot of uh, contemporary questions on them, such as the impact uh, of vehicles, car parking uh, on town centres, but also the impact of age development, retail stores on the outskirts of uh, towns, uh, edge industrial and housing states that, that drain the life out of town centres. And they, these developments really erode the sense of place that so many people find attractive in historic towns. So I was, I was looking around and trying to find good examples of people who were doing interesting things in these settings. Uh, and looking at the, at the UK, it's very difficult to find very much happening. So I was looking for Central Europe in particular. And I found examples in Switzerland of long standing collaborations between. Uh, townspeople and architects, uh, and a, a kind of flexible planning process allowed these collaborations to happen. And this, this example in Monte Carasso in Switzerland was a collaboration between Luigi Snotzi, who was uh, an architect working in the region, and the local mayor and townspeople, which has been running for about 30 years. And what it's resulted in is a, a reformulation of the planning system in the town, but also this, this idea that new architectural buildings can have a wider impact. So, the, over 30 years, there's been a reconfiguration of the town centre, the relocation of the school from the outskirts into the heart of the town, defining the centre of the town. It's also a consideration of boundaries and edges and how the town might expand in the future. And there are projects that consolidate and densify the town and fill projects and housing schemes. There's also an idea about uh, creating public linkages and reducing the impact of vehicles on the as well. So my starting point after looking at that was then how could this sort of approach be applied in the UK? I defined a study area fairly early on, which was the, the Marches area on the borders between England and Wales. It's a, uh, a geographically defined area that has a distinctive and shared history, and a lot of the towns uh, in this area uh, have common, um, common history to do with being on the border and being fought over and being contested over long periods of time. Uh, but also, uh, a lot of them have very similar pressures today. I think one of the things that was interesting was looking at the wider European uh, context. One in five people in Europe live in these smaller towns of only 50,000 people. Uh, and outside the major uh, urban areas, that figure is much higher. And it's also uh, something that I found interesting, is they're not settings that uh, architects really seem to engage with that much. Like, as I said, it's quite difficult to find good examples of contemporary architecture in these historic settings, um, particularly in the UK. So the, the aim of my PhD is to develop a place-specific approach to design in these settings. That is based on the, the integration of new buildings into uh, historic town courts. 
Then the second, second part of this is to develop uh, my own sort of language, how I would, uh, how I would make places in these towns and design buildings in these settings that respond to the sense of place. So the major objectives were to take Luigi's Nazi's approach, uh, test it in the UK, to develop a method of understanding the towns that becomes an armature for design, uh, and that designers can use in these settings, to carry out design studies that test this approach and refine it, and to also work through research by design and practice-based research. So the, the research is carried out uh, through the tools of the designer, to design that inquiry uh, with a high degree of design content. The research by design is seen as the process through which uh, new insights, knowledge, practices or products come into being. Um, the idea of critical inquiry we've heard about a bit today through design, design work. And the, the results of this can be seen as, uh, as consistent with what's going on in practice. And this is something I was trying to, to achieve also, working between practice and academia on this piece of work. The, the research is very much process-led rather than an artifact-focused. Again, as we've heard today, the, the, the testing and the insight that's gained through going through the design process is seen as the, one of the key aspects of this piece of work. And the output, the final output, is maybe, maybe secondary. I also identify quite strongly with um, Don Sean and the idea of design as a way of finding things out. Uh, that you hold a reflective conversation with the site, with the situation. And this is uh, also seen in Dan, uh, sorry, Daniel Fellman's idea that design process is one of interpretation and creation of meaning. It's an iterative. Creates a process of stages of analysis, synthesis, and evaluation interwoven. And then it's a dialogue. The, the design works around and between all these stages throughout the process. So, this is really the model of how I've been developing my design. That it, it is iterative and it is reflective, uh, and it is personal, but it is also backed up by peer review and tutor led sessions. So, I'm carrying out reflection in action as I go through the, the process which includes reading, questioning, praising, making, looking at other case studies, which is systematically documented. Then, there's also reflection in action of tutor guidance, and also, as I mentioned, peer review critiques, which have been carried out at key points in the process, and aid evaluation of design development, and good guidance on the future direction. Each project then has uh, a stage afterwards of reflection uh, reflection on action, which um, draws the themes out of the project, reappraises what's been done, and moves uh, where the approach design on for the next stage of work. So this is the outline of what I'm doing, and I'm, what I want to just quickly run through uh, now is the, set, the middle case study on this design project in Ludlow. So. What, where it's moved from is me working within the design research unit, bringing my experience from my VR studies, looking at, at place, time, and memory. Then looking at Swiss examples, and from that deriving a design framework, which is an approach to mapping towns, and which is an approach to design, which then gets tested in Ludlow, uh, revised, and then is tested in a final design project. So this is Ludlow. Uh, it's a town of uh, about 10,000 people in the marches. It's uh, Betjeman's quintessential English market town. It's a very uh, sensitive historic context, very well constituted urban grain, but does have some some problems associated with it as well. It's not it's not um, perfect as it looks when you first visit. The the process that I that I'm applying is to uh, by desktop research, field work, recording and mapping of the town, and then design proposals to test that mapping. And this is supported by interviews with identified experts, uh, mostly in the UK and Ireland, who are working in a similar context and have a unique outlook on, on working in the settings. So the first thing that I, I did in Ludlow was to, to look at how it could be mapped and understood 
and taking um, information that I was finding and abstracting that into layered, layered maps. On the left, looking at medieval plots and how those formulate the grains of town. In the middle, the morphology with the very dense uh, medieval urban grain in the centre of the town, with the castle and the church along the market square. Uh, looking at how that very tight knit grain dissipates towards the outskirts with the, um, the grain opening up Victorian terraces and uh, more, more recent housing estates on the edges having a much more open character. And the third one there, looking at, at routes and weights, weights of traffic through the town, looking at uh, main roads, alleyways, walkways, pedestrian routes. There's a huge number of yards uh, in the backland plots in these, in these settings. And I also looked at, uh, there's a whole load of other layers of mapping, looking at land use, looking at vegetation, looking at landscape. From that, and overlaying, comparing, contrasting these, I, I made a model that looked at the town and identified weaknesses within it. So these are within the town itself and edge sites where the town is weak um, and where the centre place could be enhanced in the same way that we just not see have in Monte Carrasso. Then in Ludlow I took, I took two of the sites so I was looking at two different characters of sites and design projects in those settings. So one which was an infill plot within the historic town, and the second which was uh, an edge plot close to the town square where there's a dramatic change in topography as the, the high point of the bridge of the town between the castle and the church falls off towards the surrounding hinterland. Uh, and that's a project I really want to just very quickly describe to you now. Uh, hopefully to try and give you an idea of how, how this reflection in action and on action is working in the project. So this is the site. The church you can see there at one end of the town square which runs behind this row of, row of houses. To the left, if the landscape drops off to the surrounding hinterland, currently uses a car park, very well connected into Ludlow College. The brief that I looked at for this site was a uh, food centre. <coughs> and the, the design process went through in total probably about five or six iterations to get to a point where I was ready to reflect on it and that it, it had tested the, the mapping process enough. So uh, first process developed through model and drawing, reflection in action by um, me as a designer, but also through peer review. That highlighted shortcomings in the mapping process. It would actually, they zoomed out very well in the mappings, told me a lot about how the place is structured, but didn't actually tell me much about what it was like to be in the place, what the scale of the place was, what the measure was. So there was a second phase of mapping, looking at the proportions of streets, the heights of buildings, the materials and the combinations of materials in the, in the town. Then there were several other cycles of design using both um, analog and digital media, so using SketchUp to quickly test massing, uh, sketching out plans, and again doing the reflection in action uh, with my tutors as well. And then a final proposal that, uh, that drew together everything that I'd done, addressed the scale issues of the town, and looked at the town from the vantage point of the pedestrian, and the, from the building from the vantage point of the pedestrian. The, the whole process was recorded through three different means, really, in this test piece. One is a, an A3 design diary that catalogues the, um, the iterations of design and the cycles with a critical commentary next to it. The second is a, a sketch pad that picks up all those you know, quick thoughts you have on paper, uh, brings in things that you found from other sources and so on, journal articles and the like. The third is a more formal record of the uh, tutor and peer sessions and interviews with, um, with those key experts who I've been trying to tap into. Just to, to finish, I want to show three of the drawings of where this project ended up. It's by no means the perfect solution to the problem, but that's part of this is about the process and that what I've learned through the process, which I hope to explain through these three drawings, is more important than maybe what it looks like. So this first one, to start with, I was very concerned with that structure of place, the planned view, and trying to knit this building in terms of scale back into the town. And what the 
became apparent just from looking at the aerial view was that actually you didn't get enough of a feel of that. And that subsequent phase of mapping to look at the scale of the town was very important. So this, the final version of this is a much more tightened uh, proposal that responds to the scale of the, the alleys, the lanes, uh, and the yards within the town. The second was that um, I was really working at the scale of the settlement, but that also there's an idea that that sort of abstract scale of the bird's eye view could also then be dragged into, or should be looked at in a much more detailed scale about what the materials are and what the building is actually like to be around, looking at, at detailing and so on. The third point from this that became very important was actually the view of this building from the surroundings was something I hadn't really thought about, but when I was designing that was a view I was really looking at to see how this building masked and how it responded to the context. Uh, so that in the next uh, project I'm, I'm doing, I'm looking much more at these sort of viewing corridors and where uh, around the town these important views happen. So um, just to wrap up, I think my my aim is to use design as a way of finding things out, and that, that um, in my view, there isn't a separation between a policymaker and a planner and an architect working in these places, but that actually, it's all about, this is a way of understanding it uh, through design, and that those, those roles get mingled. Um, something else that's important is peer review to maintain the quality, um, which is something that I've been trying to build into to this. The things that um, the whole recording of it needs a lot of clarity to make sure that it, it can be understood by others, and that's something that, again, I'm trying to refine for the next next step. Um, and finally, that I think that hopefully the design research I'm doing linked to practice and studio work, um, I, I think it's a, an interesting way of bridging maybe the divide between academia and practice.